Thank you very much. Good afternoon. As uh, the master of ceremony introduced me, my name is uh, Abdul Mwanga. I'm commissioner for minerals from Tanzania. And uh, I would like to share with you an overview of the mineral sector in Tanzania. Tanzania is located in East Africa and uh, its border with Kenya, uh, Uganda, and uh, Burundi, and some other country. So basically, when you look at the mineral sector, Tanzania is blessed with the rich geology. Uh, the geology has the potential for minerals in the category of precious metals, where we have gold, and the minerals in the category of light metals, we have aluminum, and minerals in the category of gemstone, where we have a very unique mineral like tanzanite, but also we have minerals in the category of industrial minerals, where we have, uh, uh, we have um, limestone and the other uh, related minerals like clays. And uh, before we start discussion with the uh, Master of Ceremony, I would like to show uh, the mineral distribution in Tanzania. And uh, I don't know, can I use this one? Is that one okay? Nothing. This one? Oh. Yeah. So if we look at this map, you can see the mineral distributions around the country. Uh, in the north part, uh, around the Lake Victoria, you can see a lot of uh, gold. And uh, basically, we are very blessed with gold. I can say if you move anywhere in our country, you have a chance to find gold. But also, we have uh, minerals uh, like uh, gemstone. Yeah, they are located in in the middle part, but also around the Lake Victoria, you can find a gemstone like a diamond. And in the north part, we have the <coughs> minerals of the gemstone like a tanzanite. But if you come to the south part, also you see gold. But this region is in the Karoo region, where we have a lot of coal mining activities that is happening. But also, if you go to, to the southern part, we have the uh, deposit of iron ore, but that has not well developed, and uh, it's a very huge deposit of uh, this material. And a good thing is that uh, they are very close to the coal uh, deposit, so, and uh, we have uh, a very uh, <coughs> interesting um, a project that many people, they are looking forward to develop uh, uh, the project. In. But uh, <clears throat> as you can see, with this, a lot of uh, uh, mineral resources. And then we, as a country, we have a very good uh, mineral policy and the legal framework that attracting uh, many investors to come and uh, explore uh, the, <coughs> the, the resources. Uh, currently, <clears throat> we have uh, about two big projects that they are going to happen, and uh, it's related with the critical uh, minerals, and one of them is uh, about the nickel. I think in the world it's very uh, uh, famous about the Kabanga nickel project. Before, it used to be owned by Barrick, but Barrick now has sold to another investors that uh, soon is going to, uh, to, to develop that project. But uh, another big project that uh, is related with the new or the clean technology is about the rare earth element, where we have a uh, possibility of uh, extracting the uh, niobium. And uh, we know that uh, niobium, they are very important for the batteries and the <clears throat> other clean technology. So in brief, Tanzania is a part of the world that has been discovered to have a lot of uh, mineral resources. Whoever want to, uh, to do mining business in Tanzania is welcome and uh, he will enjoy the business in, in the country. Thank you very much. Yeah. Just, 
Just move the chairs back again. Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, no, that's great. Um, okay, take a seat. Uh, uh, would you want a seat over there? Okay. Yeah, I have to say, you know, I've, had, I've spent many a pleasant holiday in your country, including climbing, climbing Kilimanjaro. So oh. thank you on behalf of uh, British tourists. <laughs> But there's a there's a couple of things you you didn't talk about in the presentation. And, yeah. Um, you're brave to be interviewed, which is more than the uh, minister in Sudan <laughs> wanted to be. It's just um, the minister of minerals uh, was quoted in the uh, I think the Financial Times. Dotto Biko. Yeah, Biteco. So recently, that Tanzania aims to become an important hub for critical decarbonisation materials. Yeah. Can you explain what the government's doing to encourage that? That objective? Yeah, the issues of decarbonization is the world in the, in the sense that uh, we have to reduce the amount of carbon. So what we are trying to do is to encourage people to come with the efficient technology. And the, those technologies, they have to minimize the environmental pollution. So if you look from the strategies that we have put forward is to have a very, a, a, a very good law that is discouraging people to use the law technologies to extract the minerals. So that is the strategy where we are encouraging investors to invest on the technologies that will avoid carbon producing into right. the environment. Right. I what was interesting is, I think it was your deputy minister on Tuesday at the round table here, yeah. um, specifically said that Tanzania was empowering small-scale miners. Yeah. Um, and of course, as you know, that's relatively unattractive to the listed mining companies because they're competing. Mm. How are you striking the balance between mining companies from Canada or Australia that can come in with high technology with the small-scale miners that haven't got the technology. Do you have an idea of the, the balance? You know, is it 50%, 50% or... You, it's difficult to encourage small-scale miners and foreign mining companies. Is there, a, is there a strategy or a view of how you do that? Yeah, there is a strategy uh, for uh, the... Uh, other countries to, pa to participate in, uh, in the, uh, supporting the small-scale mines. I will give one example. The small-scale mines, they have, they have their own special license. We call it it's the primary mining license that is only owned by the Tanzanian. But uh, with their license, they can, they can combine their license and convert into the mining license where it allows now the foreigners, people like from Canada or from wherever, from the world, right. to share with the owner of the license to, to, to produce a, a different so mineral product. So it's partnerships as a fact. Yeah, yeah, it's well defined in the law and the procedures. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't think you mentioned it, but I don't know how much the audience are aware that mining already accounts for half of your exports, as I understand it, yeah. and 10% of GDP, which is amongst the highest in the world as a percentage of, of yeah. the total. Yeah. And the, international, the US International Trade Administration recently described mining in your country as the best prospect industry sector for Tanzania. Um, and of course, the assets in the country include barracks, Palanhulu, North Mara Mines, and mm. the Ligano <coughs> Iron Ore Operation, and of course the famous and historic Williamson Diamond Mine. Um, mm. And this, a lot, this week, was it? Um, BHP have announced uh, they're, they're making their first investment in the whole of Africa, mm. in Tanzania, in the uh, Kabanga Nickel Deposit. Yep. So right at the minute, there's really quite a lot of interest in Tanzania. And yeah. Are there any other developments from big mining companies that you're aware of that I've missed out? Because um, there's a lot going on. Yeah, thank you very much for your understanding about the, how Tanzania is interested by many people from the world. It is true that uh, we are focusing and uh, we are planning or we are targeting that uh, by 2025, 20, uh, 
uh, the GDP from the mining sector should be 10. And if we are evaluating, by now we are around 7.9. So we are at the right track to reach that one. And uh, it's, it's a, a measure that we are doing quite well in that area to make sure that mining is uh, contributing to the well-being of the people in, the, in our country and uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, with that, I can say that uh, it's not only the big project like what I mentioned, the Kabanga, but we have another incoming a big project for gold around Lake Victoria. That is the Oa Corp. I think you have heard about the Oa Corp. They have um, made a joint a JV with the government, and uh, they have got the special mine license, and uh, now they are mobilizing uh, the resource to start the project in. I think uh, after two years, that project has to be into the operation. Right. I think, as I, as I recall, gold was first discovered in Lake, Lake by Lake Victoria, I think, in Tanzania. Yeah. Yeah. And that was in 1894. So yeah. you've been, you've been my, exploring for gold for over, a, for over 100 years. Yes. The, the, my last question is, is, is less positive. Um, as I understand it, and I'm not an expert, new laws were promulgated in 2017 that allowed for the renegotiation of contracts yeah. that if the mining um, deal had been considered inequitable um, and allowed government to take ownership of 16 to 50 percent um, and I think Barrick received compensation in return. Have you got any evidence that's dissuaded inward investment and, and are you reconsidering it or are you happy with the, the level of inward investment in mining? No, that arrangement hasn't affected the investment. Right, and right. I would say many investors now, they are very happy right. because, uh, you know, with this state participation in the investment, that was uh, uh, stipulated in the uh, new law. Right. Uh, it's, it's not just a matter that uh, the government will decide that to take that 16%. Uh, you sit together right. and you discuss and uh, you have some terms that you accept from each part, right. and after you agreed with, the, with, the, with each part, you sign an agreement that uh, as a government, they have their undertakings, and an investors have uh, undertakings. Right. And uh, it's, it, it, it looks like it worked very well, because now we have uh, many companies now, they are asking government to sit together and right. negotiate uh, to this 16%. Right. And actually, you know, it says that uh, uh, the minimum uh, is a free current interest that is 16%. Right. And many people say that, no, oh, you can dilute this up to 50%. But it actually doesn't come automatically. Right. After you have uh, signed the agreement with your, uh, with your partner, yeah. if you want to increase the share into the investment, you will need to sit down and discuss how, what do you bring into the investment if you want to increase your share. So it's a normal uh, situation right. for the business perspective. Yeah, right. Oh, that's good news. And you, you need to combine trips to the mines with trips up Kilimanjaro, which I commend to anyone. But, oh, thank but, you very okay. much. That, that's, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah.